we got to talk about a special young lady from East Double High School. She had a great day yesterday, didn't she? Katie Sharp, yeah, she. Uh, but she, I think she shot a seventy-one. If I'm not seventy-one, yeah, for, for it, was a, it was a conference tournament. Correct. Conference. NHC. NHC held, held here in Omaha. Seventy-one for the third straight year. She's medals now. Anyone who's played golf, when you three times in a row, that means you were at your best. Didn't shank. Didn't didn't hook. Can you imagine? You know, not having a a nine or an eight or something like that. She three straight years is just dominating that conference. That's incredible. Led her team to the yeah another uh, another conference crown. Now, you know, Julia Shear said when I told her that Katie had a seventy one. She says, "What's so good about that?" She says, "I shot a seventy last week." I said, "Really?" Yeah. And she says, "Yeah, we're down four Wayne playing putt putt." And I said, "Wait a minute here, putt putt. What a difference, you know." But Katie Sharp is seventy one. It was on the course that Tracy lives on, who has a Cutler shirt on today. But it's a no hawk. But uh, not only did she shoot a 71 win medals three years in a row, that helped East Noble win the tournament. They won the, they're now conference champions. And That's they've done that three years in a row, too, right? No, two years ago, last year they didn't win it. Okay. But then they won it again this year. Okay. And they had some great, great scores. Katie Sharp, what's amazing, you've played golf. Mm -hmm. you, know, some, you know, you might have a 43 and then come back and have a good round. But she, her worst round this year is 37. Can you believe that? One over. But she's had it, she's been between 32 and 37 every match. Mm -hmm. Anyone who plays golf knows how difficult that is. I mean, that's consistency. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. anybody you golf with, you have those bad days. She's never had a bad day. Well, she's already committed, I think, to go to Michigan State on the Michigan scholarship. Michigan State. Along with her brother. Her brother's a good golfer mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. The thing is, yeah, she. There is a lot of pressure she's under, though, too. That's the amazing part. I mean, because there's all the, you know, every year the hype, they talk about her. She was second in the state a couple years ago. Two years ago. Last year, I think she was fifth. one. She ended up being fifth. Last year, struggled a little bit. But, you know, the thing is this, is that the section will be here in Kenville and Hall as well, and that's when you advance. This was a conference. But I guess I'm just amazed how she just, uh, you know, just never hits a bad shot. And, you know, you'd say, well, she might have played here at home. Well, half their matches are on strange courses. They had to go down to Cater. Norwell played at Bluffton. You know, you go down courses you haven't played, yeah. and you still shoot power on there. I mean, that's what's incredible to me. Yeah, her skill level is, it's obviously, it's... Well, I taught her. You knew that. <laughs> you knew I was her golf coach. So that's not what people, Dick Bench told me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to mention Dick Bench, because he's going to come out and help you sometime. And he's a girls golf coach, and congratulations to him, well, again, for putting people people in the right places and the right pieces and so forth and, and somewhere. I think I might, you know, I probably should. I hope I have it here. I, I don't know if I did or not. Yes, I did. I, I think we should uh, probably list the, the winning girls along with Katie Sharp. Sure. Because Katie's so modest, she always says, well, you can't win with one golfer. And the thing that was amazing here, in order to win, you have to have some good things happen. Well, here's, here are the good things that happen for each double. The, the younger kids played well. Logan Hanshu had her best round of the year, shooting a 47-45. I mean, when you have a girl shoot her best round, so Logan Hanshu, she has a uh, sister, Cooper Hanshu, that's on the team. Alan Clark, the number two golfer, played steady, and then Beck Allwine. So those five made up the golf yesterday. What happened is Katie did her normal thing, just you know, one under par. The other girls played what they did, except then you find a Logan Hanshu that shoots her best round. That's why they won. Because they'd gotten beat by Homestead in a dual meet. Came back yesterday. When you play your best in a big meet, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Obviously, I hope the team goes a long way, but obviously I think Katie's going to go all personally. Well, they'll get out of the section only. would like to see them get out of the state. You have something in front of you that uh, a lot of people thought wouldn't even happen Friday night. Thought maybe we'd have to watch a Saturday night. But it happened Friday night. What is that you have in front of you? <laughs> well, Friday night, yeah, East Noble game was kind of interesting. Uh, weather obviously was a major issue. A lot, I think there were over 60 high school football games either canceled, suspended, postponed till Saturday. Uh, but East Noble, it, we we it didn't rain as hard as it looked on radar. But well, during the day it looked like we wouldn't even get it started. It's about 3 3:30. We're going to get those strong thunderstorms and lightning and thunder and whatever. That didn't happen. In fact. When we started the game, it really wasn't raining, depending on your t interpretation. We had, a, you know, it was just kind of a little, maybe a little drizzle time. You were there. Sure. Would you say it was raining when we started? 
And, uh, you know, and the, and like you said, the game is over at halftime anyway. It really didn't matter if it rained or not. That's right. 35 to nothing and half the game's over. 28 nothing in the first quarter. We have a star quarterback this year, Nick Weimer, and he works out here at Gridiron. You ready? Yeah. So we're ready for Nick. And he works out here at Gridiron. Tracy will go get him for us. And he threw four touchdown passes. Mabel had three touchdowns. Gray Fox, and I, keep, I had Gray Fox on my show one time. I said, is that your real name or is that a nickname? He said, no, that's my real name. Gray Fox, he had three. He, I mean, we just are having unbelievable uh, games. We had almost 600 yards in offense. Now, those of you who don't understand that, mm -hmm. a normal game is three, 350 for most teams. We had twice as much offense as most teams usually have. Right, 589 total yards. Gray uh, Fox, <laughs> nine receptions. 133 yards, two TDs by himself. Uh, yeah, and we had, oh, my, 313 rushing yards. They had 94 on 38 carries. Right. That's defense, too. Well, we had a lot of defense, and you were talking with me before we got on the show here. We were talking about Walker Boyles and uh, about how good it is. Nick, come around here. Get in between us here. Get in between us here, and you can kind of kneel down so you can see on there. <laughs> hey, Nick. Uh, we talked about what a, another great game you had, and I'll have you look at the camera there if you would. But well, another great game you had, uh, incredible. Four touchdown passes, great job running. The game was over at halftime. Mm -hmm. How did you guys do it? Well, uh, we just came out, and I mean, uh, Coach James, that's one of the first time playing the Cal, like at East Noble Gun, and those are their arrivals and stuff. And he just wanted to go out and pound them and, you know, send a message to everybody that. We're not as bad as we played the week before. and um, You know, the week before, uh, I'm not going to say we're better than Homestead. That first half, we could have been tied. We just mm -hmm. had some bad breaks. Mm -hmm. We could have been easily tied at halftime. Now, again, I, you know, the, Homestead's good. I'm not going to sit here and say we should have beat them. That had been a foolish statement. But the score was not indicative of what it could have been. Yeah, it was. It was uh, we made a lot of mistakes and uh, just got down in the red zone a few times and cut. Well, Steve, that. what's amazed me about Nick, and, and Coach uh, uh, Amstutz, and we're at the coach's corner, said, you know, we could not be running this offense without Nick Weimer. He said, he's so intelligent. He says, he has about five decisions to make in every play. He said, every time we send in a, a something, he has three options on passing and two in running, and he has to decide by the defense, on the snap, what to do. And he says, people don't understand. Not only is he throwing the ball well, not only is he running well, but it's all his decisions, and how do you make the right decision almost every time, Nick? It's almost every time, for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a compliment. I was just putting you down. <laughs> we, uh, we, I mean, we practice it a lot. You know, we go over everything. We, we watch it on film on Saturdays and uh, a couple times throughout the week and just make sure I'm doing everything right. And, you know, I learned from my, my mistakes. Well, you had a great – you make very few. You had a great game, but Mabel and Gray Fox also had mm -hmm. some great games in mm -hmm. there. Yeah, what, what's it like that have in the backfield, knowing that not only can he run, but you can throw it to him out of the backfield? Well, it was nice. I mean, uh, of course, we had our two offensive linemen back, Reese Hobson and Connor Holcomb, and, you know, we're just getting used to our offensive line and stuff, and Mabel, Mabel just ran hard, and he could run over people and do anything he wanted to pretty much. It made it nice for Gray then, and we could pass it to him. Well, you're very modest. You do a tremendous job. It starts with you. And your uncle was there from Crystal Lake, Illinois, wasn't he? Yeah, yes, he was. He, he came up and he made sure I knew he was there. Steve, you were going to say something. Well, what I, what I noticed, too, Nick, if you look at the numbers here, I mean, rushing 313, <coughs> passing 264. I mean, that's like dead even. Mm -hmm. I mean, was it planned or is it just the way it turned out? If you guys can do both really well, you're going to be hard to defend. Yeah, exactly. Well, it could have been 100 points, right? Well, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But, but I, no, look, we played it the way we should have. And I know, hopefully, and Coach Hampstead told me this, he says, I hope Nick's upset when I take him out. That's uh -huh. what I want to be. But I also hope he understands yeah. that, that we're trying. But he says, if he's not upset, because one of the questions that someone asked at Applebee's, well, is Nick upset when you take him out? He says, well, I hope he is. He says, if he doesn't care if he plays or not, that's going to make me mad. He says, I want to come out and say, put me back in, put me back in. But, you know, the thing is, had he left Nick and the others he in, get hurt. We, we, could have, we could have scored a lot more. But that's not the point. Right. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, we have a sectional goal. We have a big game this coming week at yes, Carroll. We big, big game. He says, you know, we're up 35 now at halftime. He says, Nick proved his point. And he's a team player. He says, that's why we're good. Which brings me to what you and I were talking about. We're bragging about you, as we should. Well, your defense didn't play bad at all either. Yeah, they, they came out and got a good three and out and stuff, and then we uh, drove down in first possession and scored, which is the first time this year. And, 
and I was excited for that that we came out strong and stuff. Well, last year, you know, we played a lot of people both ways. This year, the only one started and went both ways last Friday. Was made yeah, it. Yeah. Is that an advantage? You think? That that is a huge advantage. They uh, they're bending over. They're they're tired and stuff. And, uh, we have our team is refreshed mostly, and um, you know we're ready to go. And Mabel, he can go both ways. He's definitely the athlete. Well, the hisses I have for Friday night, we're going to have to get new chain gang people. Because yeah. three or four times we were ready to go, and Matt, and Ricky, and John Arnold, and Steve Guy, they can't run as fast anymore. They couldn't get those chains moved. Poor Nick was sitting here waiting, saying, "Get those chains." They're out Nick, of shape. Nick works here at the Gridiron. Great food, great time. Thanks to the Gridiron for being here. I know that you're just dying to go back and work in the kitchen yeah, again. Yeah. Anything you want to say before we let you go? I'm excited for Carol this week. We'll have off on anything you want to ask him, Steve? No, meet Carol. Oh, yeah. It'll cool. be a challenge. You're pretty good. Damn, yeah, we got yeah. Nick. We got Nick. We got the Super Weapon. Hey, thanks for coming Thank out. You. Thank you. That's Nick Weiber, the all star quarterback for East Noble. And again, uh, you know, your kids are great kids. We have a lot of great kids. But one of the reasons is. We don't have this good athletes. We have quality kids. That makes a big, big difference. Well, yeah. I mean, just the box score. I mean, you got two touchdowns here, three here, two here. I mean, we got a, a lot of guys can put the ball in the end zone. Well, you know, we're talking about East Noble and DeKalb and being big rivers. East Noble's three and one. We could talk forever. You know, struggling teams, West Noble and Central Noble, have lost big three, four weeks in a row. Pounded. Pounded. And, you know, that's surprising to me. Is that surprising to you? Well, yeah. Was it Prairie Heights to beat one of them this week? Prairie Heights and Central Noble played. Both of them were 0-3. And Prairie Heights beat them bad. They had a player had four touchdowns and over 400 uh, yards in the game Prairie Heights did for the first win. And, uh, yeah, they beat uh, Central Noble by a score of 49-7. Nah, the score surprised me now because Prairie Heights was 0-3 at the time. Yeah, and Central Noble. In, in the past, they've made some play. They went lost to Jim down a couple times. That's right. I was back with Trevor Tipps, who was coaching, and West Noble, very young. And they gave Fairfield a fairly decent tussle. They uh, got beat 35-14. to 14. But, uh, you know, I look at the schedule. Central Noble has a winnable game next week. Fremont's way down. They play them at home. Now, poor um, West Noble, they go to Lakeland. That'll be tough. Lakeland's very good this Lakeland's year. Lakeland's very good. In our conference, let's go back, because now we want to talk about East Noble football. They go to Carroll next week. Carroll's 3-1. and one, East Noble's 3-1. and one. Uh, people look at Homestead, and boy, I'd have to agree with them. It's going to be tough for someone to beat them. Mm -hmm. The reality is, there are three teams, and maybe four, and I'll say, tell you why I say maybe in a minute. The Haven, Carroll, and East Noble, they say, are the next three best that could come in second. Columbus City had a good ball club, but they lost their star running back. He got hurt. Mm -hmm. He's out for the year. So now people are saying, you know, is Columbus City still in that mix or not? But at least New Haven, Carroll, and uh, East Oba, and we go down to Carroll. That's not very far. We can take a big crowd, and that makes a big difference. And that Carroll game is a big game, boy, I'll tell you that. We better get there early, because it's usually their homecoming game, too. It is their homecoming so game. So it'll be packed. It's their homecoming game. One thing about New Haven, two people forget, it, uh, when they closed Harding, yes. a lot of those kids went to New Haven now, and that, you know, you, you take 20 kids off of Harding that were, you know, stars, well, that's going to really improve your football team. What they did is they allowed the Harding uh, people to decide where they want to go. Do they want to go to Lille, the Haven, Heritage, wherever you want to go? Woodland. Woodland. Uh, Woodland being the farthest, not many went there. And the Haven was just right next door. And Lille, those two. Those two are the ones that got all the athletes. Mm -hmm. And uh, in basketball, and you know, that's down the road, but the best player from Harding at Beecham who's going to Notre Dame, he, he went to the Haven, so he immediately helped their basketball and their football as well. And the Haven has a great running back, and he just, he, he'd been eating everybody up. We play them the second last game of the season. Is it here this year? No. It's down there? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's down there. Paul Young Stadium. Paul Young Stadium. Our last two games are at the Haven and at Belmont. But, you know, we got, uh, next we got Carroll, then we got a very winnable game in Norwell here. They're struggling. Mm -hmm. And then we play Columbus City at home. And then we finish with Belmont and uh, New Haven. And really, if you look at our sectional, it's going to be between us and Concord. She, Julie says 30 seconds. I, I'm going to let you talk because I talk. I can't talk for just 30 seconds. <laughs> so why don't you wrap up this no, high that's, school segment? Wrap up correct. the high school segment. They did, they, they did change uh, East Noble's class for the sectional. Uh, we no longer go south. We go more north. We're in, up, up here with Northwood and Plymouth and Concord. Concord is probably the cream of the uh, – probably they would be considered the favorite or us. Uh, going to sectional and Dwayne.